Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Dirichlet kernel. Let's consider the ortho orthonormal set of functions. These are e to the i and x for n and z. Okay? And these are orthogonal on the interval what? With respect to the inner product, with respect to the inner product, f inner product g is going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, of what? Of f of theta, g of theta bar, d theta. So that's my inner product over here. All right. And it's easy to check these functions are orthogonal, right? So clearly, if I have n, so if we look at this inner product of e to the i n x and e to the i mx, what are we going to get? We're going to get 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, of what? Of e to the i nx, and then the bar of this is going to be a negative, so I have a negative m, and I can put an x over here, dx, right? And of course, if n and m are equal to each other, so if n and m are equal to each other, this is just going to be 1, so I'm going to integrate 1 from negative pi to pi, that's 2 pi, so I'm going to get a 1 if n is equal to m. And if m is not equal to m, it's going to be a function that's either going to be sine or cosine of those values. So I'm going to give it a 0 over there because it's 2 pi periodic. 0 when n is not equal to m by 2 pi periodicity. It's the over there. Great. And so now I'm going to define trigonometric polynomials. So we say Pn of x, which is this, which is the sum j, an absolute value less than or equal to n, of some numbers cj, cj, e to the i, j, x, is a trigonometric polynomial degree n, is a trigonometric polynomial of degree n. In our study, one of the most important trigonometric polynomials of degree n is what's known as the Dirichlet kernel, when all the coefficients are equal to 1. Now you can check, actually, using the fact that these things are orthogonal, we know exactly what's going to happen with these cj's. So what will happen is we can compute these cj's by orthogonality. So by orthogonality, by orthogonality, by orthogonality, the cj is going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, of pn of x. And that's, that's, going to be, that's my function pn, right? And then e to the negative i, j, x, dx. Those are the Fourier coefficients, so we call these things pn hat of j. That's just going to be the jth Fourier coefficient, the jth Fourier coefficient. So the one we're, we're principally interested in, we're going to see in fewer other videos why this is the one that is of great interest to us, is the case when all of these Fourier coefficients are identically equal to 1. So we're going to define dn of x to be the sum over j less than or equal to n of just e to the i jx. This thing over here is called the Dirichlet kernel. All of its Fourier coefficients are equal to 1. Okay? Good. Now I'd like to find an explicit formula for this Dirichlet kernel. So what we're going to do is we're write this out. So of course, what does this look like? This looks like e to the minus i n x all the way down to e to the um, i n x. Okay. So what I can do is I'm going to pull out an e to the negative i n x from all of this over here, e to the negative i n x, right? And then we'll be left with the sum 1 all the way down to e to the, now if I pull an i n x out, I'm going to have a 2 i 2 n x. Okay. And so now we need to remember the formula for a geometric sum, right? So I have a geometric sum. If I have the sum, j goes from 0 up to n capital of what? Of r to the power of j. That's exactly 1 minus r to the n plus 1 over 1 minus r. Like that. And that's the formula for the geometric progression. That's easy to check, right? Just a telescopic series. So now returning to the Dirichlet kernel over here, 
what will this be? This is going to be equal to e to the minus i and x. And then what? In my common, my um, geometric break up to 2n, and my i n, my i n, my e to the i x is my common ratio over here. I go from 0 to 1, so I'm going to have a 1 minus what? 1 minus e to the i x raised to the n plus 1, like that, over 1 minus e to the i n x, i n x, like that. Okay, great. So what I'm going to have over here on the top is I'm going to have an e to the i n x, e to the minus i n x, that first term over there. And then that will cancel the n, I'm going to be left with a what? Minus e to the, minus e to the what? Um, I'll, have a net, I'll have a positive i n x, so that's going to be left with just an e to the i x with a, po with a positive sign, e to the i x. Positive over what? Over 1 minus e to the i x. Great. And so now the question becomes is how do we, how, I, of course I'm going up to what? My power over here is not n, it's going to be a 2n, so that's my mistake. I'm like, why is it not canceling out? So that we're going to correct that issue right there, right there. So let's correct this issue. What's that going to be? Well, this is going to be a what? It's going to be a 2n plus 1. So 2n plus 1, because my factor over here is 2n, so I go up to one more, 2n plus 1. Okay. Now, I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have an e to the what? I'm going to have an e to the i n plus 1 x. Great. And so now the trick is to multiply this top and bottom by e to the negative i n x, right? So e to the negative i x over 2, e to the negative i x over 2, right? And so what we're going to see over here is that this is going to turn into what? This is going to turn into a factor of, um, I'm going to put a negative in front of everything, right? And so if I put a negative in front of everything, I'm going to get an e to the i, e to the i, n plus 1 half x minus e to the minus i, n plus 1 half x over the same thing, e to the i, x over 2 minus e to the minus i, x over 2. And what do we see? We said that this is going to simplify to what? This is going to simplify to the sine of what? The sine of n plus 1 half x over the sine of x over 2. And that is our formula for the Dirichlet kernel uh, dn of x. And we're going to see that this kernel is what's going to help us to find the partial sums of a Fourier series in future videos. Thank you very much.